Well, hello again, and uh, welcome to uh, the VK6CS uh, Amateur Radio Channel. Um, I've got a couple of very quick uh, bits and pieces. Um, I, uh, I thought I might have a little bit more time to um, build a couple of bits and pieces, but that hasn't turned out to be the case. But they're still uh, on, the, on the list of things to be done. One you may recall was the um, L-Match Type ATU. And the L-Match Type ATU uh, was, the, was the one that uh, looks a little like that. It's got an input. An inductor and an output like that, and it had a. It's, it's called uh, it's called an L match because you have the capacitor, the variable capacitor. Uh, it only has one variable capacitor, and um, it uh, it can be either uh, that side of the inductor or that side of the inductor, depending on whether you want to tune low or high uh, impedances. But as you can see, it's a very simple circuit. Um, and because you want the capacitor either on that side for high impedances or on that side for low impedances, um, the way I drew it before was to have that. Oh, that sponge is a bit wet. I'm probably not going to be able to write on that now. You can see that some people put an awful lot of uh, time and effort into their YouTube productions, as you can see. Sadly, I'm not one of them. Hang on. <laughs> Okay, so basically what I had was uh, the capacitor, like that, going to a switch, like that. So it would either go to the high impedance side or the low impedance side. Now, um, I thought, okay, it's a nice, nice, nice simple thing to make. Something that shouldn't take too long. Um, I, the reason that I haven't done it up until about a week ago was that uh, I didn't have a, a, a variable inductor. The, uh, the oh, I've rubbed it out. The inductor. Um, now I could have had a switched inductor, but you know, having switched tapped inductors, um, they're not that easy to make. I mean, you can butt joint them, but to make a nice job of it and to put them on a former that's not going to well, may get upset when you put it, start putting a bit, a bit of RF current through it. It's, um, it's easier than it sounds. Pardon me. So fortunately, I was able to get uh, this this roller inductor here. Needs a bit of a clean up, but uh, I'm sure I'm sure this will do the job very nicely. I managed to get this uh, for uh, twenty bucks from. Um, um, I was going to say the local uh, radio club that I belong to uh, had a had a bit of a fest the other day. Um, but uh, fortunately one of the members, I, I was talking to the guys up there and one of the members said, oh I've got a couple of roller inductors and uh, you can have one of those for uh, a reasonable price and I said fantastic and um, he bought it along and I bought it. So there's the roller inductor, um, there's a ceramic switch, remember it only needs to switch uh, two positions, that's got a few more on it but um, that doesn't really matter, um, I might even be able to I haven't looked at this switch very closely, but I might be able to arrange it so that the moves a stop on it, you know, so it only goes one position or the other. And here's the capacitor. Oh, sorry about that. You can probably guess what's coming next. Um, here's the capacitor I bought for it. Now this, uh, well, I didn't buy it for this. I, I bought this capacitor um, oh, probably 25 years ago, 30 years ago maybe, in the UK. Um, with the idea I was going to, it's a 1500 puff this one, that's what the uh, spacing looks like on it. Um, I'm hoping the minimum capacitance on it is going to be enough for what I want. I'm sure the maximum capacitance will be, there's not going to be much. Uh, you know, I should be able to tune 80 metres and, and, and probably even top band with a 1500 puff capacitor I would think. I've sort of sat down and calculated it, of course I don't know what the inductance of the roller inductor is, but just as a good starting point, uh, you can see what sort of size this thing is. Um, well, can I put in it for scale? Well, there's a hand, there's a, there's a Stanley knife, um, and uh, let's see, will a pencil go through the, no, a pencil won't go through the veins, but you can see 
you can see roughly sort of what, what, what the spacing is on that. So it should be able to take a reasonable amount of power. Um, so that is going to be, they are the components, there's the, uh, the capacitor, the capacitor, the roller inductor and the switch. Um, for my, uh, I don't know if you can see all those actually in the picture, uh, for my, uh, for my L-match. So uh, I'll get a box sorted out and um, then I'll, uh, I'll get that, uh, that put together and it should make quite a good little, uh, quite a good little tuner. Say little, um, could probably get away with a smaller capacitor. This one is one, as I say, I bought uh, some time ago for um, uh, part of a tank circuit in a medium wave uh, transmitter. I was making uh, one kilowatt, I think it was, a medium wave transmitter for a uh, pirate radio station in the UK. But uh, there we go. So um, uh, that's, uh, that's the bit on the L match. Now I don't know whether to do the next bit as, no, it'd be too short. I'll do it as a, I'll do it as a, I'll do it as a, as part of this video rather than as a separate video. Um, because it, it wouldn't take to, wouldn't take long enough really for a video on its own. And that is, um, wire antenna insulators. Now, you see these, uh, you see these impressive installations, or these commercial installations, and they'll have, they'll have insulators like these. And, uh, you know, it looks really great. You know, you've got a couple of these hanging up in the air. Of course, the neighbours aren't probably going to agree with your opinion on that, but, um, you know, it does look nice. This is the sort of thing you put on, uh, on, on ships uh, for wire antennas and, um, you know, some land-based installations have these as well, some medium-wave broadcasting stations that have wire antennas, horizontal wire antennas, or, um, you know, top-loaded antennas that have got a wire uh, top section will, will have those. Uh, truth of the matter is that um, you don't really, you don't need this. For amateur radio, you don't need this sort of stuff. Um, these sort of things you can get uh, for a couple of bucks each. These sort of things you can get for a couple of bucks each. Um, from uh, oh, I don't know most uh, most ham stores, we'll do exactly the same thing. And um, of course, you can always um, uh, you can always have two, you know, connected either with a cable tie, a UV resistant cable tie, or some of that high strength um, nylon type uh, type rope that you get from most of these um, uh, the, these hardware stores. So um, you know places like Bunnings, um, you know Masters, those sort of places will do that. Um, uh, there's some stuff called grunt, which is actually camouflaged rope. You've got to be very careful that, uh, of course, when you put it down on the ground, that you can you can find it again. So you know if you put your rope of <laughs> your roll of grunt rope down on the ground, uh, be mindful. And you're outside, of course. Uh, it doesn't really matter if you're on a white marble floor, but uh, you know if you're in a forest. Or if you're out in the backyard and you, you put your grunt rope down because it's camouflaged, you you, uh, you need to be mindful of uh, you know where, where you put it because if you glance around, you're not going to be able to find it. Anyway, these things, a couple of bucks each. I can't remember if they're one or two dollars each, uh, but you certainly don't need to scour the galaxy for uh, for, uh, for this sort of thing. This is all uh, it, this is all very well for high power commercial installations, but uh, for amateur radio use, certainly in Australia, if you stick to the rules, you certainly don't need anything like. Uh, this. Okay, I think that'll uh, I think that'll do it for that. You can tell I'm thinking HF here, uh, making the uh, making the L match, and um, and uh, making the um, and uh, talking about uh, insulators for wire antennas. Um, now, uh, just a quick thing on this roller inductor. I just noticed that actually. I didn't notice that before, but that looks like that's already got a very nice shaft coupler there. And um, this shaft on the knob side is already uh, decoupled from the RF. Already decoupled from the RF. So I can I can I can bolt that into a box, drill a hole, have that sticking through, as long as the coupler wasn't touching the box, of course. <laughs> and uh, mount this thing on um, on some insulators. I've actually got some quite nice insulators. Um, and uh, I should have uh, I should have actually got those out of the box and shown them to you. It take it will take too long to go and get them and bring them back and show them to you. But I'll show them to you on another video. But um, nice insulators, 
not a couple of nylon nuts, just a couple. Of, you, know, you can get these big, uh, these nice stud insulators. They're probably about an inch long, so that would sit on those. Um, that shaft will go through the box, and uh, that would be my uh, that would be my rather nice, uh, rather nice L match. Okay, well, I found. I hope you found that uh, interesting or uh, informative, as usual, or both. And as always, uh, thank you very much indeed for watching. I'll catch you next time.